Hi everyone. So today we are going to talk about the power hour and the power of threes. So just to begin, the power of threes is something that you will use during your power hour. Um, so far in this training, um, you should have pulled out your business starter tracker and um, turned to the page that has the Fit Boss Power Hour on it. And that is an awesome guide and checklist to use during your power hour. Um, all of those in, are very important activities to do during your power hour. But I'm going to today pull out the main four things that you're going to want to do during your focused time frame where you're working your business. And I want to just first begin with sharing that your power hour does not have to be at one specific time. So you can post or do your power hour throughout the day. So if you have 10 minutes in the morning, you have five minutes while you're waiting for in a car wash, or you have 10 minutes on your lunch break or a half hour on your lunch break, you can split this up. Um, the key is to know what to be doing during that time. Um, this is crucial and important if you are wanting to move your business forward. And the, the other thing to note is that it's not a matter of having specific skills or talents in order to be successful as a coach. The key thing is that you're effective with your time and you actually do those necessary activities just like your vital behaviors in order to move your business forward. Um, usually it's a matter of doing, not a matter of it's something I can't do or don't know how to do. It's just doing it. So I'm excited to share with you, and this is going to be a little bit longer of a training because I'm going to demo and share with you some of the best ways to use your power hour um, and how to exactly go through these four key things that I'm going to share with you um, and and just make it a little bit easier for you so that there's no question in your head of how to actually complete these tasks. So I'm going to quickly go through the four tasks that you want to make non-negotiables during your power hour. Number one is adding new people to your network, making new friends. Um, this might seem like something you don't need to do right away as a new coach, but I promise you if you do it, you're going to be so glad you did because eventually you're going to tap out of your hot market um, and you're going to, you've already asked a majority of the people that you know already. So it's crucial that you're building slowly relationships with other people. And um, that's why it's important to add to your network. Number two is to connect with Beachbody or connect with other people with a non Beachbody conversation. So you're not going to bring up coaching. You have no intentions of bringing coaching unless there's something that you can help them with in that conversation. You're just getting to know people and, and being a genuine person to them and caring. Number three is to invite. And that's inviting to a challenge group, inviting to a free challenge group, and inviting to the coaching opportunity. And number four is follow-up. And you'll learn more about follow-up in the next few days, but follow-up is where the magic is at. And if you're not doing follow-up, you're missing out on helping so many people. So let's get into it. I'm gonna share my screen with you and give you a, a little sneak peek into what exactly I do. So when you are getting ready to do your power hour, one of the main things that I want you to do is to remove any distractions. So unless you use your phone during your power hour, turn it off. Don't get the notifications. Um, if you are a person who has a ton of windows open, close them out. Only have the windows open that you need. I don't want you to end up shopping on your power hour or, you know, there's so many distractions even on the side of your page, like, oh no, I got to order dog food, I better do that before I forget. So this is your devoted time to your business. So it's important that you remove any distractions. If you get a message, a text message, a Facebook message, any kind of message, 
you do not respond until you're done with your power unless it's obviously an emergency. Um, I don't even check them because I am focusing on moving my business forward during this time. So make sure that you remove any distractions and close any windows that you don't need. I'm gonna pull up the business starter tracker. You should all have this printed off. I just wanna quickly scroll down to make sure that you are utilizing this FitBoss Power Hour and just putting check boxes in. A lot of these are, are very important and um, I wanna show you the you know, the four that I mentioned before that you should start with first. These are the ones you got to knock out first before anything else. And then, you know, another great resource is using this daily act action plan um, because it also goes through those add three friends, invite three, follow up, um, and then it has the post at least five times a day. But I want to make sure that you're also connecting with three people. Um, and that's a great one to add into this because connecting with three people, um, you might want to write their names down on here. So this is where you can write their names down when you're actually connecting with people so that you keep track. You have to have a method of tracking. Start now, okay? Do not wait until you're six months in. You're going to forget. People are going to get lost in the shuffle and there's going to be people that wanted your help, that needed your help that you didn't follow up with because you didn't track. So make sure you're writing these names down and have some method of tracking. Another area that you can track is to pull up your contact management pages and just use this contact list, the friends added list, use that, challenge your prospects, add that, you know, the coach prospects. So this is where you can also add a name. So you might need to start you know, printing off more pages of this. So make sure you're utilizing this, this uh, tracker because it's awesome. Another one that I want to touch on is the Power of Three stock. This is awesome. Um, it's in the Dropbox for our team, and I've shared the link earlier today. But the Power of Threes also goes through these same things. And basically, you print off one sheet per week, and you use these spaces to write in the names of the people that you friended, the people you messaged, invited, followed up with, anyone that you invited to the coaching opportunity, and then your three social media posts, which is also very important. Um, but during this Power Hour, I want you to focus mainly on the four things and then move into the social media and the other activities. And then down here, it also has the tasks. So you're going to be checking in with your challenge groups, your work, getting your workout in, um, you're hitting success clip five, so you can check that off when you hit success clip five, and then you listen to the national wake-up call each week. That should also be a non-negotiable. So back to the power hour. So let's first start with adding new friends to your network. Now, when you're focusing on your power hour, you're going to sit down and you're going to get it done. Um, or you have 30 minutes, this is how I recommend splitting up your time. So adding new friends to your network, set your timer on your phone or wherever for five minutes. Um, this should not take very much time. Um, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can add new friends to your network. Um, and first, I want to show you, so you once you start adding friends to your network, it's important that you track who accepted your friend request. So when you go to friends under your personal profile and you hit recently added, these are people that you'll want to, after you added them to your list, highlight them, specify some way that you know that they accepted your friend request because now you can connect with them. So always take a look at this recently added section when you are just starting your power hour to write or highlight, go back to the day before and highlight the names of the people that accepted your friend request. So, to find people that you should add as friends, um, one of the first ways that you can do this is to go to um, your friends page right here, right? And you find someone from college or someone from your hometown. Um, what's important, like I have a lot of friends that are coaches or from my hometown, went to high school with me. So I don't, I steer clear of this high school or hometown section because I want to add new people that aren't connected with, with those friends who are coaches. 
because I want them to focus on their team there. It's, um, I don't want to add new friends that there are people that they may be connected with already. So that can be the little bit of tough part once you start growing your team, but it's a good, it's a good thing. You always want to give that, you know, to your team. So I would find somebody who's not a coach um, that I'm friends with. I have a lot of mutual friends with. So let's tap into Terry's profile and I would go to her friends list. And then um, right here, I can see who we are mutual friends with. Now her profile actually, her profile might be blocked to sh only show people that we're mutual friends with because I don't see the option. Now let's run through yesterday. Okay, because she only showed the mutual friends. And that might be a trigger, so when this pulls up, you only see the mutual friends. The other people shows how many friends total they have. So I'm gonna find someone else. Okay, so I'm gonna um, talk to or look at Danielle's profile, because I've helped her in the past. Um, I'm gonna hit her friends. Yep, and this looks more right. So Terry might have had some type of restriction on her profile, um, so always be sure to check that in. And then I wouldn't want to click on the mutual friends. I would first probably try this more people you may know. And I'd go through here and I would look to see who I have a lot of mutual friends with. So Amy, I have a lot of mutual friends with. Now I'm not sure if she is, I want to try to see her face because I might actually know her. Oh, I know she's friends with somebody else that I know, Nicole. Um, so definitely somebody that I would know. So I'm going to add her as a friend, or I could know. <laughs> so I'm going to add her as a friend. And then I'd go to my list, and I'd write her name down. And she loves to travel, which is really cool because I love to travel. So the goal is to find people that you think you could connect with and you share common interests. Somebody that you want to work with, right? People that look like they are your people. Um, let's see. So let's look at Jennifer. She's a young mom. Um, she's got three kids. She's a stay at home mom. Um, I think we would probably have a lot in common and we've got a lot of common friends. So I'd add her as a friend. Okay. You guys get the picture of this one. Let's do one more. I'm going to be adding lots of friends today. Mandy Bass, I know her. So I'm going to add her as a friend because I'm not friends with her right now. And that's it. There's three. I'm done. Um, I suggest three to five. Um, if you are just starting out and you don't have a lot of friends on your Facebook page, you can up that, but try not to stay more than or do more than 10 and have it each day be a little bit different. Sometimes Facebook watches you and they're like, why is she adding so many friends? Is she a spammer? So just be cautious with that. If you ever see the tiger, You'll know what I mean when I say if you have ever seen the tiger, then just stop for a while and don't add as many people. Um, I have only seen it once, um, and it was from people that I knew. So just a, a heads up, Facebook watches that, so you don't want to ever be a spammer or come across as a spammer. So that was pretty easy. Okay, another great way to um, find new friends is through groups. So right now, um, I am pregnant and I'm doing February. So I joined a group that's babies due February through March. There's so many groups on Facebook. Um, if you love to travel, if you love Disney, just search in the group function. Um, I'll show you in a second how to do that. But I would go to this page um, and I would look for a post. And I try to be active on this page. And try to find something that I can connect with. So, oh, here's the ultrasound that Ashley shared. So this is something I could easily comment on. Hey, Ashley. And I 
participate. Don't be the person that posts a lot in these groups or you're going to come across as like you have ulterior motives. You ultimately just want to connect with people, see if you have something in common, see if there's a need that you can help with. And I would comment, hey, Ashley, congratulations. How are you feeling? Your little baby is looking great. So that's a comment, compliment, question. Um, I didn't do it in that order, but hey, Ashley, congratulations. Comment. How are you feeling? That's a question. Compliment. Your little baby is looking great. And that's it, right? Um, and then I would later, um, I probably could go to her page now and add her as a friend, right? Because we have that in common. And there I sent her a friend request. Because um, I want to continue that conversation in a private message and get to know her and see how her pregnancy is going. She obviously has other kids, so I could ask advice from her. Um, she's been through this before. Um, so it's a great way to connect with other people. Um, so I love using groups for this reason. So Disney, dogs that you like, um, maybe it's a profession that you're already in, like if you're a nurse. There are so many groups on Facebook, so tap into those. And then the other area that I suggest, and I don't want to give you a ton, but is if you have a, a like page. So if you started a like page, which is not necessary if you're just getting started. Some, I, you have to be 100% committed to post three times a day or more on your like page and be willing to pay for advertisements if you want to have a like page. If you're that person, um, and that was me, I was ready and raring to do that, I created a like page. But what you would do here in this situation is you would go to a post that you recently had. Um, and I would look to see if there's anybody that I'm not currently friends with. I don't know. I kind of went through these already. Um, <clears throat> so I saw this Chanel. Gracie Strong. She commented on my post or liked it, so I'm gonna add her as a friend. And actually, she is someone that's interested in coaching um, with my mother-in-law. Um, so I'm gonna be connecting with her in today, later today, um, which is cool. So, but it's good that I'm friends with her. And that's what you would do, you'd go in, and then it's key, you guys, that you're tracking these on a list, because then you're gonna go back, and you are going to message these individuals. And you're gonna say, I actually have a sample here, um, here's something you could say. Hey, thanks for accepting my friend request. I love connecting with positive, like-minded people. And then I would recommend going to their page, finding something personal that you can compliment them on, and ask them a question about. So that comment, compliment, question. If you are not writing these people down that you add as friends in your network, if you are not connecting with them, then your time was wasted. So it's important that you're doing that, okay? And this is what's gonna make these next steps easier. So each day, so somebody accepted my friend request, then the next day I have somebody to connect with, right? And that's, that's the next step. So we're gonna move into connecting. So that's one perfect area, is to connect with those who have accepted your friend request. So I think that that's pretty basic and you are gonna know how to do that just based on our conversation. So you go back to your personal page, friends recently added and I would go back and I would message those who had accepted my friend request okay and I would use that same message which was what hey thanks for accepting my friend request I love connecting with positive like-minded people um, and that's especially if it was somebody that commented on your post or something like that, um, and then ask them a comment, compliment, question. Super easy, and you're just building a genuine relationship with people. 
So that's one way to connect or who to connect with. The second way to connect, and this is one of my favorites, is to go to who is currently online, right? If they're online right now, if they're on Facebook, um, they're gonna be somebody that's most likely gonna respond. So Amber Michelle, oh my goodness. She's adorable, right? She has the cutest little boy, our little fish. I'd go to her page. She lives in Rochester. My sister just lived there, so we have that in fine and common. Um, this is the only time when I say, go ahead and look at an image. Oh, she's doing the Love Your Spouse Challenge. Ten and a half months. Okay, so she's got a new baby boy. Let's see. I would find... I wonder where she's at. So, I'm going to message her. Hey, Amber. How are you? I always like to start with a how are you. Um, sometimes people just need to know or that they can answer that question. It's nice. It feels good when someone asks how you are. And I would say, I know this is random, but I was scrolling your, scrolling the news feed and noticed your photo on the beach. It looks so perfect for summer. Where are you all vacationing here? Is it in Minnesota? Um, and then I'd usually do like a PS your son is adorable. Congratulations. It was is here first. We are expecting our first in February. And I'd send. Right? I don't know Amber, um, but I can remember. Um, but I just sent a, a conversation with her. I really want to know where she's at because my sister's from Minnesota. The next time I'm there, I want to go there. Um, so I asked her that question. And then I also asked her with a PS something that she's going to want to answer because I already know <laughs> if I, when I'm a mom, I'm going to want to be able to talk about my kids. And I can share that and have that in common with her. <clears throat> Okay, so that's messaging somebody that is currently online. Now it's key that you are writing these people down. You get me here, right? I'm gonna say that after every one. Okay, another awesome way to connect with people, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome way, is to go to, so hit this Facebook icon at the left-hand corner, and on, this is from your computer. Um, I don't recall, top of my head, how to find it off of the computer but it's to see whose birthdays is going on. Oh my goodness, everybody loves to be celebrated on their birthday, right? Now, instead of celebrating somebody on their wall, you're gonna celebrate them with a message. So it's Wendy's birthday. So I'm gonna message her. Hey Wendy, I just wanted to wish you a Happy, happy birthday. I hope you are doing something fun to celebrate. Oh, I hope you, that's going to be my question. I hope you feel extra special today. Are you doing anything fun to Celebrate. And I hit send. 
I don't know Wendy that well. I don't even think I've connected with her before. Um, but I can send her a Facebook message that's a happy birthday. Because I know on Facebook, you get a ton of Facebook posts, but the messages feel so extra special. I love it when I get the messages. Um, and Wendy most likely has been following or we're friends in some way. So we can connect on that. She might know me um, better than I know her, but I'm not scared, right? The key is to not be scared or worry about what people think. People like to be talked to. They like not to be talked to. People like to be heard or um, feel special. So that's why you want to message them. So birthdays are an awesome way. Another thing to do on birthdays is if you have a freemium, you can offer them that freemium on their birthday and say, hey, I just wanted to give, this is also a gift I give to everybody on their birthdays. I hope you can find some way to use it. Like I have a meal planning template or if you have a cookbook, this is a great gift that you can give them that you're not asking for anything in return. Just make sure you're asking a question so that you can continue the conversation. Um, and then finally, uh, oh, actually I have two other ways of ways to determine who to connect with. Pull from your list, your hot market, right? People that you know, um, check in, how are they doing? You know, don't always go with people that you don't know. You've gotta be connecting with your hot market, especially when you are a new coach and um, reaching out to them. So that's easy, right? You know them. I'd go to Ashley. I know Ashley. I'd go to her page. I'd see if there's anything specific that I can connect with her on. Um, I love her quote. Let's see. Beautiful shouldn't be the default word to describe a person. Ah, I love it. So I'm going to message her, connect with her. Oh my goodness. It has been so long. How are you doing? I was scrolling the news feed and ab absolutely adored your cover photo quote. Just wanted to say hi. That's it. Connected. Okay. The last way is to go to your personal page or your Facebook page. Look at Bridget just wrote on my wall. This is a perfect opportunity for me to message her. Um, I'm not going to do it right now just because of time, but go to your wall, see who has posted. People don't normally post. See who has commented or liked on a post that you just recently put up um, and connect with them. It's a great way to find people. Sometimes your list is so big, you're like, I don't know who to connect with. So these people are already following you on Facebook, right? So they're great people to connect with. Okay, so number three is invite. This is often sometimes the scariest, but the most important. A lot of people do this first so that they can mark it off their list and be done. But um, I've just put it in fourth, and I want you to allow about 10 minutes to invite. And just going back to the connect, that's gonna take about 10 minutes as well. If you get done early, move on to the next thing. Awesome if you do. So inviting, you guys, you're gonna see it comes in lines. This is how I, how I work. I add someone as a friend. I connect with them once they've accepted my friend request. That conversation, if it leads to something that I can share with them, like a challenge group or uh, the coaching opportunity, something that I have a solution to a need that they have talked to me about, I'll share it. If not, I won't. I will continue chatting with them, just having a genuine conversation. But then, once that conversation dies, the next week, I invite them to a challenge group because they were on my mind. And obviously, they were on my mind because we had been talking. So it makes complete sense. So you can see everyone kind of goes through... It's like a life cycle, right? Um, now, if there's somebody that I connected with and was like, I just don't know, like, um, I don't think you should play 
who gets to join this or who gets to join the group. I think you should offer it to everyone, but you can determine if it's someone that you want to work with or not. You know, if it's somebody that like asked you no questions and was not going to talk to you, then please do not <laughs> invite them because you want it to be somebody that you connect with that gets you that, um, that cares about you as well. So that's a key thing. I think, um, I, I want awesome people to work with. Um, I want people like me, um, not saying that I mean, I'm awesome, right? You're awesome too. We're all awesome. So it's important that you, you do that when you are connecting with people and inviting. So inviting. So number one, the first thing I do is I pull up my Evernote and that has my invite script on it. And why I love Evernote, let me just stop the share and pull up my Evernote, is because I can pull it up on my phone and my computer. It stays the same. It's kind of like the notes function, but it's the same for every device that you own. And I might also have it on my Google Drive, but Evernote is where I always pull it up when I'm connecting with people or inviting to a challenge group. So this is my invitation script. You've, you have this script that I use. Um, this is the script that I use just about every single time, every single time, except I add a personal PS to the end that is non beach body related, or I put it in the beginning. See right here, I've kind of turned into more of a PS at the end. I always use their name. Um, but basically it's, I hope you don't mind me messaging, but you came to mind yesterday. I wanted to see if you're interested in joining me and a group of ladies who wanted to focus on cleaning, nutrition, and fitness for three weeks. The accountabilities are a lot of fun and a great way to stay motivated for the summer or motivated through the winter or motivated to not gain those extra pounds during the holidays. You know, you make it work for whatever time of year it is when you are super busy. Do you think you would be interested? no pressure. Key, when you're inviting, never, ever, ever, ever say, let me know. Okay? Because people won't let you know. You have to ask them a direct question. So I asked, do you think you'd be interested? And then I always love to add the no pressure because I want to keep that relationship open. I don't ever want someone to be like, I am just inviting them to a challenge group because honestly, it is no pressure. I want people to join that want to join. And I know that it's not always the right time for people, right? I don't want, I just don't want to have that relationship where people feel like I'm just inviting them for ulterior motives because I'm not. There is no pressure. We're still going to be friends and I want you to know that I'm always here if it's something that you want to do. So that no pressure is key whenever I invite. So basically, I copy and paste this and I send it to the individuals that are on my list that I connected with that are conversations that ended the previous week, or I will send it to people that have commented on a post. So let's see. Usually I remove any challenge group posts. I don't want my newsfeed to look like I'm just promoting challenge groups. So I will post it and then after it's dead, it's gone. And I don't have one up right now, but I could go, here's an, I could go to a previous event where someone said that they were interested. This is if I don't have anyone to connect with. I could go to somebody I guess I can just, uh, it's on my chair. I could go to somebody who said they were interested in an event in the past um, that didn't connect back with me. I could invite them. Somebody who commented or liked on any post that I had that was health, fitness, nutrition related, and I would send it to them, especially for people that you know. Um, I would, and then reference that post in your, in your message. Um, I would send it to your hot market first. So you guys, you don't have to, when you're first starting out as a new coach, you do not have to feel like your best friend <laughs> or um, people that you see all the time or usually connect with or you're close with family members. You can send that message right away, make it more personal, um, but you don't have to connect with them first in that life cycle stage. 
uh, because you're already connecting with them. You're, you're already close with them. So as a new coach, those are the people that you want to invite. And then you're going to want to be building that, adding your network, connecting, and then inviting. So then the next week, the next challenge, you have new people to invite. So that's where like this process is important that you're doing all of these steps. Because if you're not adding friends, if you're not connecting with people, it makes it really hard to invite, okay? So that's basically what I do for invites. I copy paste, I send that, make it personal um, and genuine because it is important. I usually switch it up a little bit for each individual person, um, but I use that as the base, send it out, and I'm done. So that, I give yourself 10 minutes because sometimes you have to be strategic about it. It might only take you five minutes. If you're going through your power hour and you've done it each day, it's easy to know who you're going to be inviting. Um, close friends, people that you talked to last week, anyone that commented on a post about getting healthy. So those are my top three areas when you're inviting inviting people. Okay, um, and then the last is follow up. So follow up is really important too. Um, I go through and I mark people that said they were interested in the past or people that I invited but haven't responded. So I invited them yesterday, and then I'll respond the next day and see if, hey, just wanted to check in, make sure you got my message. Um, I'm really excited about this next group. Would love to have you in it. Are you interested? So think about it. When you are checking your messages, it's very, very common that when you get a message, it's not the best time to respond, right? You're busy, you're in the middle of something. So don't think of some no response as a no, okay? It's usually that they just didn't have time or um, it just they were still thinking about it. So that's the follow-up piece. The magic is in the follow-up. If you're not following up with people, you're missing out. And I've mentioned that before, you're gonna learn more about it this week. Um, but that's the follow-up sin. Super easy, right? You can. Go through your list if you, you know, also want to follow up with people from last month, from three months ago that you marked on your calendar that said they'd be interested in next month, then follow up with those people. So that's what you want to do on the follow-up step. Um, and follow up with as many people as you can during about five to ten minutes. Just make sure that you're not missing people. So don't cut people off because you don't have that extra time. So those are the four areas that are so important in your power hour. If you're getting these done, your business is gonna grow, they're gonna easily hit success club, and it's just, it just is smooth, right? So I wanna make sure that when you're running your power hour, you are making those a priority. And you guys, that invite step is key, and the follow-up step is key. And you know that if you're not connecting with new people, or adding new friends, or connecting with people, it makes that invite step a little bit harder. So make sure that you are doing all four of those. If you, when you're done, when you have extra time, and you might not right away because you're getting into a groove, then move on to the other areas of the power hour. You know, this isn't meant to take a ton of time. This is meant to be effective use of time. And you're gonna get really quick with this, and it's gonna go fast. You might get it done in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, just because you're in a groove. And once you do this, every day of the week, Monday through Friday, or you do Monday through Sunday, depending on what your goals are, you're gonna be so surprised at how your business grows. So I'm excited we'll be hosting a live power hour later in this training, but I hope that these tips helped because I think sometimes it's confusing to know where to start from and know you know, what to say to people, or sometimes it just appears to be harder than it really is, because this is actually pretty simple. Um, you just have to connect with people and not be scared. Um, don't let fear of what someone else thinks dictate who you're going to invite. I know several people, including myself, that I wanted to invite, I was going to invite, I didn't because I was too worried about what they were gonna say, and then they joined somebody else. So don't miss out, and don't ever discount people. Um, take the time, build genuine relationships, and your business is gonna grow, and continue to give. Give love, give um, 
um, an ear for someone to, to have so that they feel like they're being heard. I think that's one of the most important things. And so your power is really meant to be connecting with people. That's what we do as coaches. So I hope these helped you. Um, again, find new people, five minutes. Connect new, with new people, that's 10 minutes. Invite takes about 10 minutes, three to five people. And follow-ups, that can take five to 10 minutes, depending on how you're gonna set up the rest of your power hour. After that, go into the social media posts and go into the rest of that Fit Boss Power Hour sheet for what you have time for, okay? I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next stream.